Hi everyone for Motion VFX. This video is dedicated to M Trackers 3D and M Trackers 3D Titles Pack. Let's have a look at the final project. Here we are back in Final Cut Pro 10 with the original footage. In order to integrate the 3D titles in my scene, I will need to extract the motion of the camera. And of course, I will use MTracker 3D directly inside Final Cut Pro 10. MTracker 3D is available in the filters library. And to use it, you just have to drag and drop it on your clip, like this. Inside the viewer, over your footage, there is a track button available now. You can also find it in the inspector. I can launch the track directly, but before, it is better to check if there is some element which can disturb the motion analysis. In this case, I've got two kits running inside the shot. When you have elements moving inside the shot like this, depending on the size, it can slow down the process and add wrong information to Entracker 3D. To prevent this, I will hide the two kits from the analysis. So I will draw a mask around the two kits. I will not forget the shadows on the floor, like this. In the inspector I can see the six control points I've created. I will add a global keyframe in order to animate the mask. Then I will invert the mask and check it one again. Perfect. Last detail but very important is the fact that the mask filter have to be placed before the M Tracker 3D. So I will drag the mask before the M Tracker filters in the inspector. I will select M Tracker 3D filter and I will click on the track button. The duration of the analysis will depend on the length and the resolution of your clip. For this shot, the analysis will be around 1 minute and 50 seconds. The analysis is done. I don't need any more my mask, so I can deactivate it. In the MTracker 3D parameter, you can see that we have a copy track blue button available. I will click on it right now, as it will be very useful later. Let's add the 3D title. I will open the titles library. I will go down to the list until MTracker 3D. As you can see, by default, MTracker 3D contains 16 titles. But just below, you can see that I've got a new pack called MTracker 3D Titles Pack. This pack contains 50 3D titles. All these 3D titles are animated with various texture and light effect. As I'm recording this tutorial, MTracker 3D Titles Pack is still under development, so you might find some minor differences with the release version. I will take the title 18 and drag it over my shot. I will adjust the duration. As always, with Motion VFX, you can deeply customize the title. In the inspector, you can see all the various parameters we can adjust. First, I will remove the animation in and out. OK, so my text is visible at frame 1 now. A paste track blue button is available, as we already copy the track in the MTracker 3D filter. So I will click on the paste track button, and a pop-up window will indicate me that the tracking data has been saved. It means that my 3D title is aware of the 3D space of the scene now. So I will be able to place the title inside the scene. To do so, you just have to click on the target icon. Then you will be able to see and move the 3D gizmo with the three axes, and you will be able to choose the right position where you want to place your 3D title.
I will pick this position on the left as a kid will run in the middle. But if I would like to put it on the right, it's not a problem at all. And you can see that the title can detect vertical object. We can check if the 3D title sticks to the floor like this. We will need to adjust the rotation. So you can modify the position, the rotation and the scale content. Here I will adjust the rotation. To get a better preview and result, I will modify the text with the right one. This title contains two lines, so now it will be easier for me to adjust the position. You can see that there is some reflection, which is not great with a matte floor. So I can go down in the inspector and deactivate the reflection feature. I will change the font and the size. I will adjust the position of the subtitle and modify some parameter. Concerning the 3D parameters, you will have a direct access to all the basic features, like the title front and back edge, but what is really important for the integration with the video background is the lighting. With the lighting style parameter, you will be able to mimic the light of the video background. In this case, I will ask to get a light from the diagonal left. I will adjust the intensity of the light and the softness of the shadows. You can also modify the environment map to affect the lightning of the title and get a better match with the video background. In this case, I would keep the parking lot map as they are sharing the same color values. I will apply the same values to the subtitle element. Now let's play with the global lighting values. By modifying the light position, I will modify the position of the shadows. I will need to invert the position of the shadows like this. I will also need to reduce the light intensity and the shadows opacity. My title is also too sharp. I will add a light blur effect on my 3D title to smooth the edges. You have many parameters directly inside the 3D title, but you can have access to advanced settings if you go to the text tab in the inspector. For example, you can change the texture of your 3D titles. In this case, I would keep the basic texture, but switch to a matte render as most of the elements in the background are matte. Also, you have access to the color correction tools for the environment map, which is very useful in some case to match with the video background. Here, I will reduce the contrast and add some saturation to get some light tints of colors and not a perfect white. The shadows are great, but I miss the shadows below the 3D text, the contact zone between the floor and the 3D text. To add it, I will cheat with a copy of the 3D title. By pressing the Alt key, I will duplicate the title layer. I will deactivate the top one and select the second one. In the inspector, I will use a wide scale axis in order to get a flat title, like this. Now I will change the color value to black and I will switch off the environment map. I 
I will activate the top layer to check the result. OK, now I need to blur it. In the filters library, I can add a Gaussian blur. But if I apply it directly on my title, it will also blur the background as the title works like an adjustment layer. So to get the right result, you just have to create a carbon clip of the title. I will name it Shadows. You will see that it may look wrong, but if you switch the blending mode to multiply, you will come back to the initial result. Now I can apply the Gaussian Blur on the compound clip, and we have our shadows. You can adjust the amount of the blur to get more or less density. Now we'll add a second 3D title, and I'll repeat the same operations. Okay, now I've got my two 3D titles. I will select all my elements and create a new carbon clip. To give the final look, I will add an Amphim Look filter. I will create my own look. So I will start by adding a 3D LUT by selecting one available in my library. Then I will add a lens blur effect. I will adjust the aspect of the shape and the intensity of the blur. And to conclude, I will add a vignette effect. Let's check the result. To get more tutorials on MTracker 3D, go to the MotionVFX YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Ciao ciao. Bye bye.